The problem with another debate is that it's just too late. Voting has already started. She's had her chance to do it with Fox. You know, Fox invited us on, and I waited and waited, and they turned it down. They turned it down. But now she wants to do a debate right before the election with CNN because she's losing badly. You know, it's like a fighter. She sees the poll. She sees what's happening. She's losing badly. But it's like a fighter who goes into the ring and gets knocked out. The first thing he says is, I want a rematch. I want a rematch. And I won all of the primaries. Remember, she won none. She went into no primary. She, she got no votes. Biden, in all fairness, I'm no fan. But in all fairness to him, he got 14 million votes. She got none. She's done one debate. I've done two. It's too late to do another. I'd love to in many ways, but it's too late. The voting is cast. The voters are out there immediately. Is everybody voting? Please get out and vote. I would rather see one day voting, paper ballots, voter ID, and proof of citizenship. And we have a nice, honest election. We have one state, you go forever. I mean, it's like for two and a half months, and then they have the right to delay the count for weeks and weeks. The whole thing is crazy. We're going to get it changed. We got to get in. When we get it, when we get in, we're going to get this craziness changed. Everyone knows that Kamala Harris cannot explain how she would make your life better because it's really her policies that have destroyed this country in the last three years. She was the border czar. Now she says she wasn't the border czar. It doesn't matter. She was in charge of the border, put there by sleepy Joe Biden. He wanted to go to the beach. She said, I don't have time. I got to go to the beach and sleep. Who the hell sleeps on camera? You have cameras watching. I don't want to ever fall asleep on live television. <laughs> Kamala Harris cost your family $28,000 in higher prices. Last month alone, she lost. Think of this. Last month, they lost in this country, 438,000 full-time jobs. That's a government number, including 24,000 manufacturing jobs. That's last month. And the interest rates are lowered for political reasons, but they're also lowered because the country is not doing well. We would rather have you as president. Think of this. If you would rather have me as president or, okay, let's do this. Let's do a poll. You ready? Who wants Trump as president? I'm shocked. Is there anyone brave enough to raise your hand? Who wants Kamala as president? I'm looking for one brave soul. That would be, that would be very brave. Who would you rather have as your president? Radical, liberal Kamala Harris, who created the worst economy in your life. That's the worst economy that we've ever had under them. Or the businessman who created the greatest economy in the history of our country and in the history of the world who created the greatest. Kamala Harris is promising war on American energy. Oh, she's after energy. Oh, she's after it. You know what they did? She came in, they closed up all of the energy. The prices started going crazy. So Biden started screaming, get back to what Trump was doing. But as soon if they won this election, the day after they win, your energy prices are going to double and triple. You know that. The largest tax hikes on families in American history is what they say. The largest small business tax hikes in American history and the most crippling regulations in American history. All of this is shutting down power plants and banning gasoline powered cars and trucks. Would anybody like to drive on occasion a beautiful gasoline driven car? We want a gasoline powered. Now they do have a new one, hydrogen. The problem is it tends to blow up every once in a while. And, and you go many, many blocks in the air. You say, what happened with, so that's a little bit early. But we want new technology, we want hybrids, we want a lot of things. Under the Trump economic plan, we will cut your energy prices in half within, mark it down, with, and you can get very angry at me if we don't do it. Within 12 months, your energy prices will be cut in half. We have more liquid gold under our feet than anybody else. And we will rapidly defeat inflation. So inflation is a misnomer because the inflation is now getting stabilized because the, our country is doing badly. 
But the prices have been driven up here and people can't afford the groceries. I told the story the other day, a woman, sort of elderly woman who was sad, goes up to the counter, register, puts three apples on and then realizes she can't afford it. And she took one apple, brought it back into the refrigeration, came back and she took two apples. That shouldn't be happening in this country. That shouldn't be happening. And by slashing inflation, we will cut interest rates and reduce the monthly cost of your typical mortgage by $1,000. $1,000 a month. Listen, so interest rates with me were at 2%. Interest rates with her and Joe. I got to add him. I don't know. Is he still the president? I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I hate to waste the time by saying and him because I don't think I don't know. Is he the president? Because yesterday his wife took over the cabinet meeting, right? Said, I'm going to ask my wife to take her. He hasn't had a cabinet meeting like in two years. And yesterday they finally had it. And he said, I'm going to let Jill handle it. We will manage a lot of things are happening there. A lot of bad things are happening. We will massively cut taxes for workers. We will have no tax on tips. We will have no tax on overtime. And no tax on social security benefits for our great seniors. No tax. And it makes sense because the seniors have been hurt so badly with inflation. So we're going to have no tax on social security for our seniors. And while working Americans catch up, we're going to put a temporary cap on interest rates on credit card debt at 10 percent. Some people are paying 25 and 30 percent. It's crazy. You know, in theory, that's against the law. OK, called the usury laws. But in theory, that's against. So we're going to cap it for a period of time at 10 percent. This election is about the economy. This election is about the border. That's what it is. And I am your border president. Your border president. Kamala would be your invasion president. She would be your country destroying president. But remember this, look on the border. In 2016, we had a bad border. I fixed it. And it was so good that I couldn't mention it in 2020, even though, excuse me, I might say, we got millions more votes in 2020 than we did in 2016, right? Some bad crap happened. Some bad things happened. We got millions and millions of more votes. So what a disgrace. Think of our country, of our president. You wouldn't have Ukraine, Russia. That wouldn't happen. You wouldn't have any inflation. You wouldn't have had the attack on Israel. And you wouldn't have had the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. And that's the way they withdrew from Afghanistan. None of this would have happened. And a lot of other good things. We would be energy independent. We were already energy independent. We were going to be energy dominant by now. More than Russia, more than, more than anything. We have more than Russia. We have more than Saudi Arabia, more oil. We have more than anybody. I call it liquid gold. We have more liquid gold under our feet. And what do we do? We go to Venezuela to get oil, to get tar. They sell us tar that we refine in our country. In Houston, Texas, not a pretty sight. As border czar Kamala Harris has allowed 21 million illegals to pour in from all over the world. They're coming from the prisons and the jails. They're coming from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're terrorists, and she's letting literally at record levels terrorists are pouring into our country. Did you see the chart? Four years ago, we had 11 terrorists come in, and we got them, everyone. Now we have thousands of terrorists in our country, and the worst terrorists from the worst countries. Here in North Carolina, migrant crime is totally out of control, encouraged by sanctuary jurisdictions, sanctuary cities all across your state. In July, an illegal alien who borders our Harris released, she released him, special order, into our country, was arrested for stalking a woman into a public bathroom in Charlotte and attempting to rape her and ultimately rape her and hurt her very badly. Here in Wilmington last month, an illegal alien from Venezuela brutally stabbed a man to death. This murder came just four days after he was arrested for horrible domestic violence. 
But instead of being deported, this criminal alien was released to kill again. Kill again, he did. And in June, a fugitive illegal alien criminal from Honduras was arrested after savagely murdering a 23-year-old in the sanctuary jurisdiction of Mecklenburg. Every, anybody come from Mecklenburg County? You read about it. That was a big one. That was a bad one. Nasty, nasty. Today, I'm announcing a new plan to end all sanctuary cities in North Carolina and all across our country. No more sanctuary cities. Uncle Sam, do you agree? Uncle Sam agrees. I had a feeling you would, right? You're great. As soon as I take office, we will immediately surge federal law enforcement to every city that is failing, which is a lot of them, to turn over criminal aliens, and we will hunt down, capture every single gang member, drug dealer, rapist, murderer, and migrant criminal that is being illegally harbored. Every one of the top 25 worst cities are Democrat-run cities. We will get them out of North Carolina, and we will send them home where they belong. I will ask Congress to pass a law outlawing sanctuary cities nationwide, and we will bring down the full weight of the federal government on any jurisdiction that refuses to cooperate with ICE and our great these are great patriots, ICE and Border Patrol, and our great Border Patrol. They're not, allowed, they're not allowed to do their job. They want to do their job. They're not allowed. Within two years, there will not be one single foreign criminal gang operated in North Carolina or anywhere else. You have a lot of gangs. Hate to say it. You have a lot of gangs in this state. Are there any gang members in the audience, please? Would you please raise your hand? So that's the choice. Kamala Harris will fly criminal migrants into every one of your cities and towns. Did you see that? They're saying, well, we've decided to get tough on crime. You know, like two weeks ago, because they want to try and get some votes because they're not doing so good. This issue is not a good one for them. But did you see? And then we learned that they're flying them in in beautiful, big, fat, beautiful Boeing aircraft, just like that one, with more seats, actually. I have fewer seats in mind than they do. But they fly them in with beautiful aircraft. They fly them all over the country by the hundreds of thousands. They're flying in over the border. So they don't want to stop them because they're continuing the flights into our country. I will get every migrant criminal out of our country and I'll get them out fast. We have to. We have no choice. And they're taking over our country. You see what they're doing. Kamala Harris's border invasion is also crushing the jobs and wages of African-American workers and Hispanic-American workers and also union members. Unions are next. You watch. They are working and hurting what, what's going on with African-American workers and with Hispanic in particular. It, it just they're taking your jobs. They're taking your jobs. Every job produced in this country over the last two years has gone to illegal aliens. Every job. Think of it. We are, what we're doing to this country is so sad. You know, I stand up here. Thank you. Thank you. You're right about that. We'll save you. We're going to save you. We're going to save you. We're going to save you. No, we're going to save you. But it is sad. Young guy, I don't know where the hell he is. There are a lot of people out here. But when he screams, you've got to save us, President Trump, that we need to scream like that, that you would think in this country that you even need something like that. It's very sad. But we're going to save you. We will. We did it once. We're going to do it again. And we're going to do it at an even a higher level, an even higher level. That's one of the big reasons why I just won the overwhelming endorsement of the rank-and-file membership of the Teamsters. They voted for Trump. They voted for Trump. Last month, American board workers lost, think of this, 1.3 million jobs. So, American voters, and their voters, American workers lost 1.3 million jobs. Meanwhile, the migrants picked up 635,000 jobs, plus another seven or 800,000 jobs, at least, that we know of. But the Americans lost jobs. What a disgrace. 
I don't, I don't even, you know, you, you read some of this and you hear the facts. You find it hard to believe it could be happening, actually, because, you know, the Republican Party has become a party of common sense. I call it the party of common sense. We're conservative. We're all of the same. But it's a become a party. Where is the common sense in open borders and high taxes and the job numbers that I just read to you? Even Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said this week, quote, the influx across the borders has been one of the things that has allowed unemployment to rise and rise substantially. To save you jobs, you must vote for Trump. Very simple. Very simple. So in the latest Rasmussen poll just out, thank you. Remember, I used to talk about the polls, right? I used to talk about the polls, and I forgot about it because I won the primaries by so much, I didn't have to talk about them. But in the latest uh, Rasmussen poll, you know what happened with Joe? We beat him by, I think, 21 points, and they said, you got to get out, you can't win, and he got out. So now I got a second race. This never happened. I went, think of it, spent $100 million on beating Joe. Now we beat him. And he couldn't win, and they went to him, and they said, you can't win, you're out. You're not supposed to say that to a president, but they said, Joe, you're out. Get out of here, Joe. And they really, they, they took it over. He got 14 million votes, and she got none. And then they never thought she was going to get it, but it turned out that she got it because they wanted to be politically correct. She didn't get one vote. She didn't win one primary. She was the first one that quit the race when they had 22 candidates where Biden won it. But in the latest Rasmussen poll against her, just came out, we're eight points up. In the New York Times, in the New York Times, Sienna Paul, can you believe New York Times, they can't be happy. We're nine points up in the Midwest alone. In the Emerson poll, highly respected, we're three up in Georgia and leading Arizona by a lot, Wisconsin by a lot, and I think we're really doing well in Pennsylvania. That's what the word is. But remember, don't get too carried away. They cheat. That's what they do. They cheat. Too big to rig. We got to get out there. Everybody's got to vote. And in the American Greatness Poll, we're beating Kamala by three here in a place called North Carolina. And one that's very exciting, a poll just came out where we're actually leading in the state of Virginia, which no Republican has won in many, many, a long time. But take nothing for granted. You have to get out and vote. You just have to get out and vote. We cannot accept it. We, what they do is, uh, it's the only thing they do well, they cheat. Their policies are no good, their government is no good, their management is no good, but they cheat like nobody can cheat. We're pleased to be joined today by a senator that I'm very proud of, actually. He ran and won and beat somebody who was tough. And uh, I recommended before that Lara run for that office. But Lara said, I have a beautiful family, a husband, and two of the most beautiful kids. You're going to meet one of them in a minute. Because we happen to name her Carolina. So she said, you know, Dad, I'd really, and we have a great gentleman named Ted Budd, a congressman, and he's fantastic. And so I said, Ted, you want to do it? I'm going to give you my endorsement. And I gave him the endorsement, and he has been a great senator. Ted Budd. Ted. Hi, Ted. He's done a fantastic job. Also, I was early with him, too, Dan Bishop, who is fantastic. Dan, you're looking good. You're looking good. Thank you, Dan. He's great. He's a warrior. David Rouser. David Rouser. David. We love David. And Anna Paulina Luna. I want to say it perfectly. Anna. She's so popular in Florida. I don't know. What's your next move? Stay. Just relax. But what's your next move? She is so popular and she's a warrior. They're all warriors. That whole group. North Carolina Republican Party chairman, he's been incredible, Jason Simmons. You know Jason? Thank you, Jason. How are we doing? Are we okay? Okay, we got to be okay. We got to win. This is a very important state. We win this state. I think it's going to be over fast. And we've only won it. We've won it every time, every time. So we're 5-0, and we're five and oh, including primaries. RNC chairman. So he was so good. And you know what he was good on? Stopping the cheating. 
Because when other places were winning, we're going to win 10 o'clock in the evening. Then at 3.02, a lot of ballots came in. But they didn't come in here. He had 603 lawyers, and he was tough as hell. And I said, that's the guy I want to run the RNC with Laura. They're doing an unbelievable job. And by the way, Laura's here. Would you stand up? Laura and Eric. Laura and Eric. I call it a super couple. That's a super couple. Thank you, Vera. And you're doing a great job, Laura. And he's doing a great job. He's the most subpoenaed human being in the history of the United States. Every day he gets a subpoena from Congress, from a crooked DA, a crooked AG, Democrat areas only, but man, he's tough as hell. He's become, he was such a nice young man just a little while ago. Now he's become like a hardened, tough. I said, is that my beautiful Eric? But it is, and he's still beautiful, and he's smart, and he is tough, and he's handled it so well. Eric, stand up separately, come on. He is the most subpoenaed man in the history of our country. He got more subpoenas than the late, great Al Capone. Al Capone is like a baby compared to Eric. Thanks, Eric, good, great job, honey. Great job. And Robeson County Commissioner Michael, where's, where's Michael Watley, by the way? Where are you? Where are you now? Stand up. We're counting on this guy. I didn't take him from any other state. I took him right from here. He was your party chairman. And it's true, though. You see about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and then 3.02, you see these states that were easy wins. They sort of fell off because of COVID and lots of problems, there were lots of problems, but bottom line, they cheated and they fell off. But you know a place that didn't fall off? North Carolina, and it was headed up by that man. So Michael, you better win or you're never gonna be able to come back here. If he doesn't win, he won't be at RNC and he will no longer be in North Carolina. He'll be looking for a job. I think he's going to win, and that's what he's focused. I said, you know, we don't need votes. What we need is honesty in the election. If we have honesty, we have all the votes we need. And by the way, before I forget, I don't want to forget, you have about 30 of the most incredible women that follow me all over the place, and they're from North Carolina. Unbelievable. They follow me all over the country. They're from North Carolina. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice to finally be here? You don't have to travel to California, Texas. They travel all over the place. They're great. They're great and we love them and they're beautiful. I don't get the husband. They're all happily married, right? I don't quite get it. And here's another one. Look at that. They didn't want to sit with you. They wanted a better location. That's the boss. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great honor. And we also have front row Joes. They're all over the place. They stand on line for two, three days because they want to get that front row. Thank you very much. And they've seen plenty, and they were there, unfortunately, and Butler, that was a hell of a day. Sitting right where we're sitting right now, that was a hell of a day. That was something, never let that happen. And also, Robeson County Commissioner and member of the Lumbee Tribe, a friend of mine and a friend of ours, John Cummings, where's John? Thank you, John. John is a real, uh, a real supporter. We appreciate it very much. And we're going to make sure that you guys are OK, because they have not been treated properly by this administration, as we know. Thank you. You can tell everybody. The Lumbee tribe has been wrongfully denied federal recognition for more than a century. Only a century? That's not that long. Centuries? Hundred years? That's not that long. But no, we're going to take care of it. We'll take care of it right at the beginning. All right? You can tell them. Biden and Obama promised remedy that they want to remedy the injustice, but they never did it. They broke their promise. And today I'm officially announcing that if I am elected in November, I will sign legislation granting the great Lumbee tribe the federal recognition that it deserves. OK, you'll be all set. Say hello to and I got to know them. They're great. But. Unfortunately, we weren't in office when that happened, but uh, they treated him very badly. Thank you very much, John. We also have, and I said to, I alluded to it, a very important member of my family, far more important than Eric or Laura, and her name is Carolina, and she's beautiful, 
and she's sweet, and she doesn't know how evil life is. She hasn't experienced it yet, but she does know how great life is, and we want to make life great for everybody here, and we're going to do that. Can I ask Carolina to come up? Is that possible? <laughs> Carolina. This is the... She sat on my lap during the Republican convention. see the new senator when Ted someday he's going to say, sir, I've had it. I can't do it any longer. He's going to resign or leave and we're going to have Carolina get in there and run. Anyway, would anybody like to meet Luke, her brother? Luke, come on up. Grandpa. Oh. oh. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, honey. Great job. So cute. Oh, he doesn't want to get off the stage. Oh, wow. 